السلام عليكم. Today lecture will be a global uh, lecture regarding uh, cardiac assisted device, the difference between temporary and permanent cardiac assisted device. And I will start with uh, the most important, uh, the most common used uh, percutaneous uh, temporary uh, assisted device in thyroid balloon. In this lecture, we'll, I started with uh, the shape, the anatomy of an aortic balloon, uh, its insertion site, and uh, uh, tips for insertion. Comparing temporary versus permanent uh, assisted device. For a temporary assisted device, it's like a rescue therapy for a recovery or um, heart transplant or permanent device, like uh, VA ECMO. Uh, or impella. Uh, Intiotic balloon pump can be used for uh, just for a recovery or another stage for uh, another uh, temporary assisted device. Uh, permanent devices uh, like uh, will be uh, destination therapy, uh, like uh, heart to heart meat or hardware or to the artificial heart, or maybe uh, a stage for uh, if your patient is young, uh, a young uh, stage for a transplant. Comparing uh, short-term or temporary devices with the long-term uh, or, lo or longer devices, uh, the short-term devices is uh, an urgent uh, can be used uh, urgent. It should be less than uh, 24 hours or uh, 72 hours insertion. Uh, it can give support for days. Um, need ICU setting uh, for recovery or long-term devices. There is high risk for infection. And uh, the patient sometimes uh, ventilated, they require invasive hemodynamic monitoring, or some extent, some uh, some of patients need to be paralyzed. Uh, it support post a ventricle or one ventricle, partial or full support, uh, uh, but maximum support usually than the permanent devices. For long term, it's maybe urgent, uh, very rare, but okay, it's elective insertion. The support can be in for months to years. Uh, Post-cardiovascular uh, surgery, uh, the goal uh, toward hospital discharge, the risk of infection is very low, and the uh, uh, need early intensive care and late non-invasive monitoring. It provides left ventricular support uh, only for a large amount. Sometimes in some centers, they start to use uh, the ventricular-assisted device. Uh, the portable uh, uh, intercorporeal for the right side also. Intiotic balloon pump counter pulsation. Uh, its name inter 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 aortic means mean inside the aorta. Its level which would be uh, two centimeter less than uh, sub left subclavian and above the uh, left renal artery. This is the position. And the pump it is balloon. It's balloon inflated and deflated. The balloon is inflated uh, in diastole, deflated in the stool. And pumps acting like uh, when it's inflated, it takes about 80 to 85 percent of the aortic uh, size. So it's acting like a pump pushing the blood outside the aorta. Counter pulsation, it's uh, like the, uh, the, the, the balloon giving pulsatile flow, but the pulsatile flow is different from the aorta, the aorta uh, different from the heart itself, the heart contracting in systole. But the balloon is deflated in systole. The heart is relaxed in diastole, but the balloon is inflated in the diastole. That's mean by counter pulsation. If we come for uh, the anatomy of anti-aortic balloon pump, we will find that it's, it's two parts. Uh, the part inside uh, the human uh, human being or the body, which is the castor itself. And uh, it's connected to the console, which is outside uh, the body. And uh, also, the lower part of this console is the battery and uh, uh, the, the helium uh, cylinder. And if we come for uh, the, uh, the caster itself, we will find the caster is two parts, part inside the body and part outside the body, which is started from uh, the fixation of uh, the, 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 uh, the, the catheter. And uh, uh, the caster itself connected to the helium cylinder, which inflate the balloon itself. Now we will take a caster itself. It's composed of two parts: uh, extra body part, which is outside the body from here, where um, after the uh, the sheet uh, seal, universal sheet seal, 
and this is the part of the castor inside the body. The uh, intraortic balloon uh, castor is uh, uh, composed of double human castor, uh, which is uh, this is a vascular uh, shaft, uh, which is sliding uh, sliding over the uh, guide wire by Slendinger technique. And uh, this is the balloon, which is cylinder in shape, polyurethane balloon. Its length is 20 to 30 uh, centimeters, its volume to uh, 30 to 50 uh, ml. And uh, uh, it's uh, inflated by, um, uh, by helium, uh, and it's connected to helium cylinder, as I showed before. The outside part is uh, composed of the part that's inside the sheath to be trial. Because if we need to advance or uh, or uh, uh, aspirate the, the castor, it can be done uh, while the while the sheath uh, is still uh, fixed. Recent uh, interiotic uh, balloon castors are fiber optic castor, and this is a very uh, good part, which uh, having uh, uh, no electrosurgical interference during uh, the operation of uh, 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 cardiac surgery, like cautery pacing. There is no need to do leveling or zeroing. It doesn't affect it by the patient movement. Doesn't need to be affected by fluid level inherent uh, transducer and give accurate measurement of uh, blood pressure. When it comes to the back of the console, this is the uh, helium, which is a cylinder, which uh, which is used uh, to inflate the balloon and it's low density. That uh, means that there is little turbulent flow, so the balloon can inflate fast and deflate slowly. It is relatively uh, benign and eliminated quite quickly if there is a leak or balloon rupture. We will find here ECG cable which connected to the balloon or uh, the element of trigger and here is a pressure uh, pressure uh, cable also. Here there is a picture of uh, antiotic balloon console which is composed of two parts. The first part is the screen where it shows the ECG uh, pressure waveform, and uh, the, this is the waveform representing the inflation of the balloon itself. And this is the, uh, representing the uh, helium cylinder uh, and how much it's filled with helium. This is a part of a balloon uh, inflated and deflated, if deflated or inflated. And this part of the console representing the manual for uh, how to work. For close uh, picture for uh, the balloon itself, it's uh, ECG, the uh, pressure waveform, the deflation or inflation of the balloon. Here is the balloon itself inflated or deflated, the helium cylinder, the degree of balloon uh, inflation indicator. Uh, there is, in balloon, there is some of uh, balloons inflated the uh, O2, semi O2, or uh, manually can be uh, done if, the, if, he didn't, if we didn't use uh, um, fiber optic caster. Here we will find that this is a um, uh, start when we need to start the, uh, the, the balloon. Uh, we want to do standby to see the pressure without effect of the balloon. Uh, the operation mode, it's O2, the balloon will completely take uh, over uh, the, uh, the trigger, uh, when to inflate, when deflate, uh, semi O2, uh, we can adjust it by, by uh, to some extent, and manual, we inflate or deflate depend on uh, uh, the waveform we see, and uh, uh, we can change that by, uh, by these uh, buttons, uh, by inflation or deflation changing them uh, uh, based on uh, the waveform we, we need. The source of trigger may be ECG, pressure waveform, base maker, and this is uh, from where we can, we will uh, adjust one, and based on it will be the source of the trigger. The frequency, if we need the balloon to be, um, give a pulse a one to one, one to two, one to three, all of these will be explained later. And the augmentation means that the degree of balloon inflation. If the balloon is fully inflated, it will take uh, the size of 80 uh, to 85% uh, of, uh, uh, of the aortic of the aorta. So uh, it will play. Uh, it will not completely include the aorta. 
it will take only uh, 80 to uh, 85 percent of its of the aortic size. Types of insertion: the size of the balloon. We can use 30 uh, 30 uh, cc for patient who has height uh, 147 to 162 or basal surface area than uh, 1.8. Uh, 50 cc we're using for the height with uh, more than uh, 182 and um, or basal surface area more than um, one uh, 1. 1.8 uh, surface area 40 cc in the in the uh, height in between tips of insertion sometimes we uh, do uh, percutaneous uh, with the cheese or without cheese or sometimes it will be difficult to access the artery so it can be done through arterial cut First, we uh, should measure the length uh, of the balloon to which we uh, till we, to which it, we advance it inside the body. So we can measure uh, before the insertion from the insertion point to the sternal angle. We can use a fluoroscopy guided insertion uh, and uh, uh, intensify, uh, in, in, intensifying the screening during insertion. Uh, we can use uh, transesophageal echo and uh, it should be two centimeter distal to the, the origin of the left subclavian artery. Uh, X-ray can be done uh, after insertion to see the level of uh, the balloon. Uh, it's in the uh, at the left uh, mean uh, bronchus or in the second or third intercostal space. Uh, the also very simple uh, measurement uh, during the insertion, the shape of arterial waveform and uh, its uh, presence. It's, it will give indicator for the position of the balloon. In this video, we'll see uh, the insertion of the antiotic balloon pump. Now we get uh, the access uh, for the sheath and uh, the guide wire spot. We will start to advance very slowly, gently the balloon while it's deflated and uh, try to advance it without any resistance inside the sheath to avoid uh, the, the occurrence of any uh, resistance or problem during insertion to do friction in the balloon itself. After inserting and reaching the tip, uh, the position uh, two centimeter distal to uh, left subclavian. Uh, we will stop the insertion and start uh, the next step. In this video, you will see uh, while we inserting the balloon, there is some resistance. The balloon started to bulge uh, uh, together, uh, bulge it outside the cheese. So now we shouldn't go against the resistance. We should uh, uh, take it out uh, very gently. And they try to do uh, the, make the balloon anticlockwise to be able to advance it very gently and softly without any resistance. If this is a step failed, we can go with another uh, balloon. Don't push against the resistance to avoid kinking on the wire and the friction uh, inside the balloon. This is nice X-ray was taken during the balloon inflation. This is the tip mark or peak. Uh, Radio opaque mark, and this is the balloon is completely inflated. This is the reference for this lecture. Uh, besides, there are mini comerical, uh, uh, mini comerical website uh, explaining the antiaortic balloon and its work. Thanks uh, for uh, your listening, and I'm happy to receive your questions and uh, comments in the comments below.